Lesson 25. What is aperture and how does it work? You've already learned that in every camera lens there's an opening called the aperture. This helps control the amount of light that can enter the lens and affect the sensor in the camera. Managing your aperture settings well helps you to get well exposed photos. That's photos that are not too bright or too dark. Lenses in most phones have a fixed aperture. You've got no way of controlling the size of the opening. You must control your exposure by using the shutter speed and the ISO settings. The aperture in a camera lens is made up of a series of blades. As you choose a lower f-stop number, this opens the aperture up, makes a bigger hole and lets more light in. When you choose a higher f-stop number, this closes the size of the hole and lets less light in. And you can control the lens aperture setting when you have your camera set to aperture priority or to manual exposure mode. In aperture priority, when you adjust the aperture setting, the camera will set the shutter speed to get a good exposure based on its calculations. When you're using manual mode, you can adjust both the aperture and the shutter speed to set the exposure that you want. The size of the aperture opening is measured in f-stop numbers. The lower the f-stop number, the more light can enter the lens. The higher the f-stop number, the smaller the hole is, less light will enter the lens. On many lenses, the smallest aperture setting you can choose is f22, sometimes a little bit higher. On a kit zoom lens, the widest aperture might be about f3.5 or 4. And on prime lenses, these are lenses that don't zoom, you'll usually have a wider maximum aperture like say on a 50 millimeter which might be an f 1.8 or 1.4 sometimes even f 1.2 or wider but a standard 50 millimeter lens is f 1.8 or f 1.4 and these are relatively inexpensive lenses using lenses that have a wide maximum aperture this is my 35 millimeter f 1.4 can give you a lot more flexibility because they will let in a greater amount of light. For example, this is an f1.4 lens compared to my zoom lens, which is an f4. So this lens can let in eight times more light when I open it up to f1.4 than my zoom lens, which only opens up to f4. So this means that you can get an exposure when there's less light without having to use a slower shutter speed or a higher ISO setting. Basically, the aperture in a lens works very much the same way that the iris in our eyes do. When there's a lot of light, our iris will be closed down small. When there's not so much light, our iris opens up to let more light in. You can do the same with the aperture setting in your lens. In low light, we can open that aperture as wide as possible and let as much light come into the lens as we need to. Or when it's really bright, we can close it down and let less light into the lens so that we can really manage our exposure well. Or you can choose to use a wide aperture even when there's a lot of light, but you must manage your shutter speed and your ISO carefully, choosing a faster shutter speed and a lower ISO setting. The aperture setting you choose also influences how much of your photo will be in focus. This is called the depth of field, and I'll teach you more about this in the next lesson. Lesson 25, practical exercise. What is aperture and how does it work? And this exercise will experiment using a variety of aperture settings so you can see how they affect your exposure. Set your exposure mode to aperture priority, set your ISO on 400, and set your lens aperture to f8. Find a static subject to photograph and a location to take your pictures where the lights are not going to change as you're doing this exercise. And with your settings like this, start to take some photos and make some interesting compositions. And as you've taken some photos like this, then set your aperture to f11, so that's making the aperture size smaller, and take some more photos. And then keep changing your aperture. So you've started at f8 and then f11, then go to f16 and f22, and even narrower apertures if your lens has them. After you've done this, 
go down to f5.6 so that's one stop wider open than it was at f8 and repeat this process opening up your apertures to f4 f2.8 f2 f1.4 f1 if your lens allows for this so go to the widest aperture setting you can get take a series of photos the key here is to listen to the shutter speed as you're making these pictures as you're adjusting your apertures listen to the sound of your shutter and also make a note of what the shutter speed was each time you adjust your aperture so i'll adjust mine down to f11 and take another photo and then f16 and f22 now i'll go back to f5.6 f4 that's the widest that i've got on this lens can you see any relationship between the patterns in these numbers I know these f-stop numbers can be quite confusing, they're a very odd set of numbers, but what's most important to remember with your f-stop number is that the lower the f-stop number, the wider the aperture setting, the more light will enter the camera. The higher the number, the smaller that hole is, the narrower the aperture, less light will enter the lens. So a lower number means more light, a higher number means less light. The main points in this lesson are the aperture is a variable opening in the lens. It controls how much light can enter the lens. The size of the opening is measured in f-stop. Practice this to improve your photography. Each time you take photos, experiment with a wide, medium and narrow aperture setting. Always pay attention to the shutter speed, especially when you're using a high f-stop number because the shutter speed may be too slow.